Hello and welcome to the lecture series on economics of growth and development. In the previous classes, we have seen certain committees with respect to estimation of poverty in the Indian context, both in the pre-independence phase as well as the post-independence phase. And in the previous class, I've talked about Suresh Tendulkar's estimate of poverty in the Indian context. In today's class, I'll be talking about the poverty estimation by C. Rangarajan committee. So let us first understand the backdrop on which this committee was formed. So this committee was actually formed because there was national outrage with respect to the poverty estimates given by planning commission in 2012 to be very precise that is it was rupees 22 a day for rural areas that means a person if at all he or she is earning rupees 22 a day or spending rupees 22 a day in rural parts of the country they were considered to be well off that is they were not considered to be poor so this is how poverty was estimated and because of that this planning commission estimate led to something called as the national outrage and on the backdrop of this the government of india again under planning commission they is, they established a committee or they set up a committee under the chairmanship of c rangarajan to look at or to review the poverty estimates in india so let us look at what were the objectives of this committee yeah so primarily the objective was to review the international poverty estimation methods and indicate a method for poverty estimation an empirical method for poverty estimation in india so this was the first objective of this committee that is the c rangarajan committee and second was to recommend how poverty estimation can be linked to eligibility as well as accessibility or entitlements under various government of india schemes so this was again another important thing because if you see it was considered in the 1962 uh, expert group uh, for estimation of poverty that whatever government whatever uh, goods or public goods which are given were considered to be free of cost they were the responsibility of the state per se and therefore they were not in incorporated into measuring poverty but this committee was to look at or review or recommend how poverty estimation can be linked to eligibility as well as entitlements under various government of india schemes these schemes are obviously the poverty alleviation schemes undertaken by various ministries in, in the government of India. So these were two primary aims or objectives of the C. Rangarajan committee. So let us now see what were the different recommendations given by the C. Rangarajan committee on poverty estimation in India. So the first was with respect to methodology. So the, the Rangarajan committee did what they borrowed or they borrowed data from Center for Monitoring Indian Economy because Center for Monitoring Indian Economy is, a, is an individual entity, a private entity which was looking at household pyramid surveys which are talking about the monthly per capita consumption expenditure of households in India and this happens in real time. So therefore that was one of the important things and if you look at the methodology a household is considered to be poor if it is unable to save. So this was again a very benchmark uh, sort of an uh, estimation which was done by uh, the or which was given by as uh, as a recommendation given by the C. Rangarajan committee that is if at all a household is not able to save that was considered to be a poor household and entirely the methodology was dependent upon the CMIE that is Center for Monitoring Indian Economy Household or Pyramid Household Expenditure Surveys. So this is one of the important recommendations given by the same. The second was with respect to normative and behavioral levels. Now let us look at what normative and behavioral levels are talking about. So normative level, it is talking about the ideal and desirable level of nutrition. So this is again an important thing because if you can recollect in, in, in the in the uh, Rath committee as well as the Dandekar committee, they talked about something called as incorporating nutritional levels and a similar sort of thing is seen here in terms of normative and behavioral levels. So in case of normative, I am looking at the ideal level and the desirable level of nutrition in the population. Second of all, I am looking at or determining the non-food expenditure also like, like on what non-food commodities the consumers are spending. So this is again an important thing which is incorporated in this survey yeah, or, or, or for that matter in this methodology to, 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 to look at poverty estimation in India. So this is again now ideal level of nutrition and the non-food consumption has to be or for that matter non-food con consumption let us uh, look at that in the later uh, segment of this lecture. But the ideal and desirable level of nutrition should be given by a very good government of India agency which is looking at 
all of these and such an agency is called as the ICMR that is Indian Council for Medical Research and they came up with the ideal levels of nutrition or desirable levels of nutrition. Let us look at now what were the nutritional requirement given by ICMR. So whenever obviously they are given on three counts one is called as calorie the second is called as the protein intake and the third is called as the fat intake by an individual. So it was in terms of calorie it was 2090 kilocalories in urban areas and on the contrary it was 2155 kilocalories in rural parts of the country. So it is in terms of calorie. Now this is the ideal or desirable level of nutrition when you when you are looking at the recommendation given by by the C. Rangarajan committee. Furthermore in terms of proteins it has to be 50 grams in terms of urban areas and whenever I am talking about the rural areas it has to be 48 grams. Now this is my per day consumption. This is my per day consumption that has to be the minimum nutritional or ideal or desirable level of nutrition if at all I am looking at the rural parts of the country vis with the urban parts of the country. <clears throat> and furthermore we have fat or the consumption of fat it was 28 grams in the urban setup whereas on the contrary it was 26 gram in the rural setup. So these are some of the recommendations given by the C. Rangarajan committee. In the next lecture I will be talking about the estimation of poverty on the basis of recommendations given by the C. Rangarajan committee. So please stay tuned. Thank you.